faith promise giving. So t- this morning we're going to wrap it up. And um, I hope you've got the concept of what faith promise giving is all about. It's not about you. It really isn't. It's about your commitment. You're asking the Lord to give through you. To give through you. You understand that as soon as you look at your checkbook, it's not being given through you. When we look at our checkbook and our balance book and, and our budget and say, well, I can't do that because I don't have the funds, it no longer becomes about giving my faith. It really doesn't. This is different than tithing. It really is different than tithing. It's different than a love offering. It's, it's, it's not a love offering. It's not tithing. It's not a special one-time offering. It's not a pledge. We talked about it not being a pledge, and it's not a contract. Because whether you understand it or not, a contract is... is it, we, we do contracts because we don't trust each other, right? Right? When I go buy a car, they make me sign a contract because they don't trust me. They don't trust that I'm going to pay it. And so it's not a contract. It has nothing to do with that. But, but real briefly, we went over faith last Sunday. talked about faith, and, and, and we used 2 Corinthians. I'm not going to go through all this real in-depth. Uh, but we talked about the faith of the faith promise giving, the faith aspect. And that, and, and that in, in 2 Corinthians 10... In verse 15 it says, We do not boast beyond limits of the, of the labor of others, but our hope is that as your faith increases, our very influence among you may be greatly enlarged, so that we may preach the gospel in lands beyond you. Lands beyond you. Because the fact is, not everybody in this room can go to a foreign mission field, right? We are privileged today to have, have a couple who have been on a foreign mission field. And I'm, and I'm going to tell you, Chuck mentioned this also as, you know, the sad aspect of it, and not, it's not really a sad aspect, is that money is needful to send these people on a mission field. It's needful because the airlines, last I checked, do not let you ride for free. And you need money to go. And you need money to, to do. And you need money to get back. But you know what that gives us? And we look at that and we say that, oh, that's really sad. It needs to be that way. But doesn't that give us here an opportunity? It gives us an opportunity to support people like this. To support other missionaries, to spread the gospel throughout all the world. And that's an amazing thing. So we talked about faith. And and that our faith is based on the foundation of Jesus Christ. My faith and faith promise giving is not on me. It's in the fact that Jesus Christ said, you give and I will give. I will give through you. I will will work it out so it works out. As our faith increases, the gospel can be spread to all the world. And we talked about Abraham and Isaac. And the faith that Abraham such a, had such a faith in God's promises that he knew if he killed Isaac, God was going to raise him again. It wasn't even an issue for him. That the faith and faith-based giving is knowing that God will supply my needs. And he will. And then we talked about promise. And we went to Hebrews 11, 1 and 2, and we said, For faith, uh, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. By faith. They obtain a good report. And we talked about, you know what? We all want a good report, right? And we talked about being tried, and that Abraham was tried. But how many in here have been told to kill your son? He was tried. It was a test. And the fact that, that testing is a promotion for us, right? God can use testing and trying as a promotion for us. And so that, that <clears throat> when we are willing to stand on the foundation of Jesus Christ, we are going to be tried. We are going to be tested. But remember, God, remember what Abraham said? Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. Amen. And God will do the same for us. It, it, you understand? I mean, how many times, I, I do it too, but how many times do we read the, in the Old Testament, the New Testament, we look at those men of faith and we say, I can never obtain to be that. Those were great men of faith. They were people, they were, you know, we're, I'm down here, but, but they were up here. Right? Well, have you ever studied out the life of David? Guy was, guy messed up a lot. I'm sorry, but what does God call me? A man after his own heart. You know what? They're no better than we were. They were just human, human beings. But they were willing to step out on faith. And that's what God's asking us to do. And then Thursday night, Chuck went into 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 8. And, and, uh, and, and as you, you know, I'm not going to read it, but, but, but if you were here, you got it. If not, go, go ahead and read uh, 2 Corinthians 8, 1-5 one, one there. Um, but, but he talked about that faith promise is not a, a something that we do on our own. We need the grace of God to be able to step out in faith. We need the grace of God. And Brother Chuck also told us that, that we are uh, a channel by which God can work. That's amazing, right? 
Think about it for a minute. You are a channel that God can work through. That the, the creator of this universe actually will use me. Me. This, this guy who screws up all the time. But he's willing to use me to proclaim his work. That's amazing. If that doesn't give you a little goosebumps, I don't know what will. Because it does mean, you know, I always believe this, that we're supposed to be conduits. You know, if you know anything about electricity, I just know that if you lick your fingers, because I tried it when I was younger, and you put it on an electrical thing, it hurts. I tried, that, I tried something else once, and I'm not going to tell you what that was. You can ask me afterwards if you want to know. But it hurts. I know electricity does that. But God says we're supposed to be, and I believe I'm using the right word, a conduit, right? Where the electricity flows through us, so where it flows to me and then to somebody else. I'm not supposed to be the end product. It's not supposed to stop with me. That's what faith-based giving is all about. That's what faith promise is all about. That God can use us as a channel in, in which to, to spread the gospel. And how that when we allow God to use us in the channel, we have joy in our life. And we do. We really do. If you've never been able to give, okay, I'll just go out in the world, but why do you think uh, uh, charities sometimes do so well? Because when people give, it makes them feel good about themselves. You know? And why can't we feel good about doing God's work when we do? There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and that we prove the sincerity of our love through faith, promise, giving. We did. We prove the sincerity of our love when we give. We step out in faith. It proves that we love the Lord. And then Friday, I had my brother check an excellent job on what is faith. Hebrews 11, 13. He, he really brought up Friday night. I got to tell you. That really... I had, I had, of course, I've read through Hebrews many times, but, but I've never heard that message on 13. And, and he did a great job. And, and that we need spiritual eyesight to see it far off. Because seriously, why, why, if, if, if we're going to give and we can't see that there's going to be a product in that, I, I don't know, why give? Right? If I'm giving to give just to give, what, 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 what is it going to do? You know, we want to, you know, I can remember on one of our trips we were in um, the Amazon. Uh, I took a team into the Amazon years ago, and we were there, and, and we were, um, that afternoon, we were, we were uh, doing a little BBS program, and there was another group there from, from Oregon that was there, and we got talking to them a little bit and stuff, and, and look, I'm not, I'm not discounting what they were doing or anything. They were there, and they were paying shelves and helping build some things, and that's a good and needful thing, but they had nothing of substance to leave with people, you know? And so I looked at this, and I thought about that, that Friday when he was talking about, you know, that, that we should see it far off. And, and, you know, there's times I go, and we do a BBS, and we do a program out of the mission field, and we do these things. And I wonder, is it, is it, is, is it leaving any fruit? And I'm going to guess every missionary probably goes through that maybe at some times. That is, is what I'm doing doing any good? That's where you have to have the spiritual sight, right? God says his word will not come back void. We have to understand that if, if we're willing to do that, God's going to take care of it. So we need the spiritual eyesight to see it far off. We need to see God's promises, right? But it's called faith. You live on God's promises, right? That's called faith. We need to be able to see that. Uh, that their actions were directed, the, the, the men of faith, that their actions were directed by the fact that they looked for God's promises. Even the Old Testament saints, right? They looked for God's promises. They knew God was faithful. And he challenged us in that, in that our giving, that we would be able to see the gospel being spread. That right now, today, we can see that when we give and we support uh, these guys or different people or different missionaries, that they're going to spread the gospel. That's going on. Do you realize? And I, you know what? This gets me excited. The fact that you guys support me so well as we support so many other missionaries, we realize we have a, we have a part in spreading the gospel literally throughout the whole world. This church right here, you do. It is to your account. Paul said it's counted to your account. Doesn't that get you excited? Doesn't that make you want to give? Got a little bit, right? It's got to make you want to spread the gospel a little bit. So he challenged us that we could see the, the, the gospel being spread, that we could see that souls were going to be saved, that lives were going to be changed, that villages were going to be one to Christ. I think that's a healthy challenge. I really do. Not only did they see it far off, but they were they were persuaded. They were they knew it was true. I don't know how else to say it. They see it afar off and they say, you know what? I know it's true. I don't see it. I don't know. I have never and I told you, I think I said this last Sunday. My dad went to be with the Lord on, on January 10th of last year. I've never seen that. I haven't been to heaven. 
But I know he's there. Amen. And I know I'm going to get to see him someday. I'm persuaded that God is faithful and his promises, and that's going to happen. Because he said it was. They acted trusting in God's ability to provide, and they acted, the act of faith is embracing God's promises. And so, so that catches you up to this morning, right? And so now that's my introduction. Chuck, Chuck took, took about, I don't know, 40 minutes to give an introduction the other, morning, the other night. And it was a great introduction. And I can remember Brother Pack all the time, if you remember him. He preached for an hour and a half. He went, okay, that's my introduction. Now we're going to get down with the message. You know, we all kind of went, ooh. Yeah, it's always a three-point message. So, so today I want to talk about the courage to act. The courage to act. We've heard about faith. We've heard about promise. I get it. I get it. it we have to walk by faith. I get it, brother. And, and we have to. And, 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 and God's, yes, God's faithful. But you get, you know what? And that's all good and fine, but now you have to act. Amen. Now we have to act. We have to literally put feet to our service. <clears throat> Amy Carmichael, I don't know if any of you have heard of Amy Carmichael. She was a missionary in India. Sydney has. Very good. Uh, she was a missionary in India, and her, her main work was with the orphans over in India. And she was a Christian lady, and she was there 50 years doing this. And she said a couple things. She goes, the world will never go deeper than we have gone ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know what? And I think about that. How, how can I teach faith promise if I am not a participant in faith promise? How, how can my faith go any deeper than I'm willing to step out? Because we have to be willing to step out in faith, for our faith to go deeper. And so it's important. We have to do the work. We, we, it's mandatory that we do the work. And she also said something else. She says, you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. Amen. If you love it, you're going to give to it. Aren't you? You're going to sacrifice for it. If you really love something, you... A bunch of us in here have grandchildren, right? Oh, man, they trump our children, they trump the dog, they trump everything. Amen. And we give for them, you know. Uh, Pam loves her grandchildren so much that when we go for birthdays, we take presents for the grandchildren, the other kids, you know, mom and dad, we take it for everybody. And Josh actually said, you know what, Mom? you got to stop bringing so many presents for all the other kids. You know, but we love our grandkids. And we love people. We do stuff for them. So, you know what, I think, that saying, you know, that, that, that's been, been on my mind this week. It says, you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. It's true. Faith promise giving is about that. God, lay on my heart what you would have me to give above my tithes and offerings, and I make a commitment. I promise to give. And it's faith-based. It's through faith it's that God is going to give this to us. And so Hebrews 11, um, in verse 7, it says, by faith. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, and prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he commended the world, and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of all things not yet seen. Doesn't that sound like Hebrews 11, 1 a little bit? Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Noah built an ark. He built, God said, hey, Noah, I want you to build an ark. Well, why? He goes, because it's going to flood. Noah hadn't seen a flood before. Hadn't seen anything like that before. But he understood that it was what Chuck was talking about. The, the things that we haven't seen before. And he stepped out on faith, and, 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 and he moved by faith. And, and you see, because confidence... Plus conviction equals action. Amen. Confidence plus conviction equals action. We can trust in God because He's our firm foundation. And action always follows belief. Amen. If you don't believe it, you're not going to act on it, right? Amen. That's why people say, well, you know, the Bible's a lie, and I keep going back to if this Bible's really a lie, then why did all those men, why were they all willing to die for what they believed? They knew it was true. Right? Their actions follow their belief. They believed in Jesus Christ. They believed in what he said. And they were willing to act up. Why did 12 men change the world? Why can't this church change a little portion of the world? Why can't we? We can do that, folks. Do you understand that? All around us, the world is going crazy right now. They really are. I was in, I went to the store yesterday after, after 
we love services, and I just needed to buy. Oh, the one thing you can't buy, just at our store, people aren't worried about harboring and arteries. There was plenty of bacon and sausage and hot dogs. Shelves are full of that. <laughs> that wasn't really a big issue for people. But anyway, I go down the aisles, and the aisles are empty. And I'm standing there, I'm just kind of chuckling a little bit. There's this guy standing next to me, and we look at each other, and I go, he shakes his head a little bit, and I go, people just need Jesus. And he goes, no kidding. <laughs> and I walked away. You know, and it was just like, and then I go outside, and there's this guy, and he's got an SUV full of water, full of bottled water. The SUV is half full of bottled water. And I'm looking at it, and I really want to, and I should have went to him. But I didn't. Because I probably would have really cool, cool him a little bit. And eh, that's not the right thing to do. And, and I apologize for that. But I just thought, you know what? That comes out of the tap. It's free. <laughs> you don't have to buy it. It comes out of the tap. So, so, so we're running scared, but I understand that. But, but see, action follows belief. If we believe it, we're going to put action behind it. First is to give your heart to Jesus, right? Do you remember giving your heart to Jesus? At one point in your life, you 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 believed that Christ could save your soul. You believed that that if you didn't accept Christ as your personal savior, you were going to hell. And you believed. Do you remember that moment? I do. I was in my bed at home, and I remember that. And so I believed, and you know what followed? Action. I asked the Lord into my heart. And so James says, faith is more than just saying you have faith. It's action. And I'm not talking about, one thing I want you to understand is I'm not talking about works for salvation. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about <coughs> works after salvation. Amen. So don't get, that, don't get that mixed up at all. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. The scriptures tell us that. Uh-oh. There. Didn't want to skip the page. You know you wanted the whole thing. Uh, Luke 6, 638. It says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together. And running over shall men give unto your bosom. For the same measure that you meet with it all, I shall it be measured out to you again. Give. The word give. Right? It says give. Give is an action word. Give, we give when we believe. When we, when we have faith, we give. Give is an action word. You know? This church, fortunately, loves missionaries. We love to give to missionaries. But a lot of churches, I'm, I'm here to tell you, they will talk about it, but they don't follow it. I've been to those churches. And some of them told me they don't want anything. They don't want anything like that at their church. And that's sad. But let's not just talk about loving missionaries. Let's show them we love them. Let's show them we love them above and beyond. This is an opportunity for us to give, to take that action. And the thing is, it says, Give it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down and shaken together. As hard as you can press that down, as hard as you can inherit life, the first phase of the promise <laughs> um, conference I went to with, with Brother Harold, I will never forget this. And he uses this first time as his jumping point. And he gets out there, and Harold's not a skinny guy, okay? He knows that. But he'll get out there and he does the, he, he gets out there and he says, you know, give and it should be given to you. And then he comes to the shape part, right? And he puts his hands up and he does this. And I will never forget how he does that. But it's a great picture. Because it's like, you know, it's like, if you give, if you're willing to give and you press down with your giving, you know what? And God says he's going to give back to you. I'm going to guess God can press a lot harder than you can. <clears throat> God can give back a lot harder than we can give. And that isn't the point. Don't get me wrong. It's not that this isn't this isn't wealth prosperity preaching. This is all about giving. And God promises. The thing is, it's not about wealth prosperity, but it's about standing on the promises of God. God says He's going to give back to us. That's just standing on His promises. So the word "give" is an act is an action word. We want to show the missionaries we love them. Um, this is an opportunity for us to take action. So, so I understand, and, and I get people. That will ask me, and Chuck said this the other night, people ask me, well, what is the will of God? And so you get people that will ask, well, I don't understand, you know, I don't understand how faith works, so how do I show faith? And, and brother, you got to understand, well, I'm not poor. I'm, I'm over poor. You know, I'm really poor. Well, that's fine, because I'm not asking you to give out of the funds you already have. This is faith promise. This is asking God to give through us. 
what he, what, what he hasn't given to us. It's to give through us. And so, you know, and the missionaries don't care how much you give. I'm like, you know, I'm going to tell you right now that the $10 in God's economy goes a very, very, very long way. So you don't understand how far it goes. Because it reaches the, you know, you say, well, yeah, okay, well, $10 doesn't buy a lot of gas to put in the car to get there. But you know what? Maybe in the way there, uh, missionary witness to somebody. And that person takes it, and they witness to somebody. And all of a sudden, your $10 just produced this whole line of salvation. Right. We need to think about it like that. Sometimes we get limited in our thinking about what God can do with $10 in our economy. But we're working on God's economy at this point. And God can take care of it. And He can expand that a lot farther than we can. I mean, think about... Think about, you know, John, God does not judge on quantity. He judges on quality. Think about the widow's mite, right? The widow's mite, Luke 12, uh, 21, 1 through 4. And he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow putting in two mites. And he said, this is the Lord speaking, and he said, Truly I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than you all. He might have been a southerner, I don't know. He says, he's put in more than you all. For all these out of their abundance. We give out of our abundance. But an offering for God. But she has given out of her poverty. You know, that strikes me. Because we do that, don't we? We give out of our abundance. We look at our checkbook and we say, how much can I give? I have this much money. How much can I give? And she said, this is what I have. I'm going to give it. She gave out of her poverty several times in the scriptures. Paul commends people for giving out of the poverty. And God still took care of it. And then in, in 2 Corinthians, and I'm, I'm not going to go over this for time's sake, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 1 through 5, Brother Chuck did a great job on this Thursday night, so I'm not going to try to build on that. He did such a good job. But this is such, I'm going to read 1 through 5. It says, We want you to know, brother, brothers, about the grace of God that which was given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means, of their accord, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief for the saints. What would it be like, John and Liz, what would it be like if we had people begging to give money? What would it be like? If our churches all over the country would say, oh, can we give more? I didn't give enough. Oh, I forgot. I only gave my tithe this week. I forgot my offering. I want to give more. Do we have room in the bank? Do you know if, if our churches would have that mentality, what we could do, how we could explode the world for the Lord? That would be crazy. It says, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this, not as we expected, and I want you to listen to this. It says, but they gave themselves first to the Lord, and then by the will of God to us. They first gave themselves to the Lord. And that's what we've been talking about. We have to give ourselves first to the Lord. Because if we don't give ourselves first to the Lord, big promise doesn't make, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If we give ourselves to the Lord and we say, Lord, what will you, what will you have me to give? Not what will I give, what will you have me to give? Lay on my heart what you will have me to give. And you know what? I commit, I'm going to give it. Amen. And that's what they're talking about. I love that verse. It says they gave themselves first to the Lord. He's not commending them. And Paul saw that. He's not commending them just because they gave money. He said, you know what? You got the first things first, right? You gave to the Lord first, and you gave to yourself. I'm sorry, let me start over. He said, first you gave yourself to the Lord. You went to the Lord in prayer. I have no doubt they didn't seek the, the Lord's direction in all of this. And that's what faith right, promise giving is all about. Seeking the Lord's direction. Lord, what will you lay on my heart to give? Not this book, not, because it doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't make sense if you look. I, I have taught finances in this, in this church. And it said you make a budget. And you stick to that budget. And now I'm asking you to blow your budget away. No, I'm not. I'm not really asking you to do that. God's going to keep that budget in half. Right? And I think Brother Chuck did a great job the other night. He said, you know what? I, uh, my mind might not remember. There's three ways that, that God's going to take care of this. He's going to increase your the money coming in to take care of it. 
And my guess he's going to increase it almost to the dollar of what you, what you give it. Or he's going to decrease your expenses. Or he's going to ask you to sacrifice. You know what? And in the sacrifice is the faith, is the learning. And I've always seen God still supply Amen. on the other side. And so, so, so we need to just be aware that, that it's God who's doing I'm not asking you to break your budget. I don't want you to break your budget. Okay? I want you, I want, I want you to ask God to give through you what he's not going to give to you. Okay? Um, last Sunday we spoke about Abraham and his walk with the Lord and offering up his son, how he understood that God's promise to bring a great nation through Isaac meant that even if he sacrificed his son, God would raise him up from the dead. From the dead. So for a few minutes, I, I, I want to talk about Noah. Noah, Noah knows it is, is an interesting, you know, it, Noah's day was full of evil and violence, was it not? And we read the scriptures and said, and God warned Noah. It says there's judgment coming. God went to Noah and said, brother, there's a judgment coming. And it's coming pretty soon and it's coming on your land. You know what? And Noah, what did Noah do? Noah heeded the warning. Noah, in, 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 in Matthew 24, 38, says, For as the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and getting in marriage until the day that Noah entered in the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away. So shall also the <coughs> of the Son of Man be. Okay? In the days of Noah, so you look at this and you say, Well, what's wrong with, with eating and drinking and being married and getting in marriage and marrying? And there's nothing wrong with that, except for one thing. They left God out of the equation. Where was God in any of this? He wasn't there. And God comes to Noah and he says, You know what, Noah? The judgment's coming. The day is coming. I'm going to cleanse this earth. Build me an ark. And Noah, you, you, you realize that Noah had the opportunity to say no. Right? He had the opportunity to say no. He could have said, I don't know what an ark is. And I don't know. I'm not going to do it. But he didn't. Because Noah was a man of faith. And so the people were eating and drinking and they forgot all about God. And they had a man in their midst doing a crazy thing. I get that. But he was preaching the word of God to them each and every day. And they still refused to pay attention. They didn't listen to him. There is a judgment coming. The people were so busy about their own lives. How can you be so unobservant that you don't stop for a minute and listen? But well, we get busy, right? And I've talked to Brother Chuck so many times, and he says, this lifestyle in the United States is way different than Africa. And I've been there, and I've experienced it. And I'm serious. But when you get there, church starts when it starts, and it ends when it ends. And because of our time constraints, we're usually leaving before they're done. You know, and, and, I, and I love going there, because usually we show up at whatever time, 9, 30, whenever we show up, then the pastor beats this drum, right? There's only like three people on the Now I remember the first time I went, it was like three people, and I go, okay. <laughs> this really isn't what Brother Chuck painted it to be, right? And all of a sudden they're beating the drum, and I didn't think much about it, and people just start coming out of the woodwork. And before long, that whole church is full. And they start singing and dancing, and, um, and they, would, they would do that all day before, before we could preach or give any kind of message to them. They love the Lord. And they're, and they're there, and, 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 and their, their, their actions follow their belief. And it's important. We've got to walk by God. And so in 2 Peter 3, 9, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us. Not only that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. He wants all to come to repentance. The Lord has a different heart than you and I do. He wants every man, woman, and child to come to repentance. Noah believed God and Noah preached hard. He preached the same thing. He wanted the people around him to come to repentance. I know he did. God wants us to walk with him, just like Noah did. He wants us to walk with him. People need to see us walking with God. Why do you, why do you, you say, well, why is that so important? Is it a relationship between God and me, a very personal one? And yes, it is. It's very personal. It really is. But who do you want your, your children to see walking with the Lord? Do they want to see their friends walking with the Lord, or do you want them to see you walking with the Lord? Right? Didn't Noah, didn't, didn't Noah, he saw his father, he saw his grandfather, he saw his great-grandfather walk with the Lord. And he saw that he had a good example. Right? Or wasn't it Timothy that because of his grandmother, 
He knew the Lord. He walked with the Lord because of that. It's important that we that, that our children see us walking with the Lord. Faith isn't only about for us, people. Those of you who have children, all of us in here that have children, whether they're grown or not, my children, even though they're adults and have their own children, need to see me and Pam walk with the Lord. Those grandchildren, they need to see me and Pam walk with the Lord. That's my legacy. I'm not, I'm not anybody special who's going to leave any kind of legacy behind that the world talks about. But I'm going to leave my faith, hopefully, and my witness behind. Faith-based giving is walking with the Lord. It's walking alongside God. No one walked with God in building the ark. It took him 120 years to build that ark. That's a long time. And how many of us get patient when a burrito's not set in 30 seconds in the microwave? Right? I mean, we... But the delayed gratification went out the window years ago. And we get impatient. And I know I'm in, and I admire somebody like Britt who works with his family all the time. And when he goes out, he still goes out with his family and they don't know the Lord. And you know, and they, they, they don't want him to pray hardly anymore. They don't want him to talk about it. They gotta be careful because Britt's coming. You know? Good. Let him get a little uncomfortable. You know what? People need to see us walking with the Lord. Genesis 6.22 says, uh, Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did uh, he. We need to have the courage to put our faith into action. We at times ask, well, how can I walk by faith? How does it, what does that look like to walk by faith? What does that look like? Well, I'm in here to tell you that faith-based giving is walking by faith. It's giving what God has not given to you yet. And believing that he's going to do it. And it's not easy. I, I'm not going to say it's easy, guys. It's, it's walking by faith. That's what it's all about. Because Hebrews 11, 6, 6 says, But without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a redeemer of them that diligently seek him. You know, it's like the story. It's like the story I told you when I very first started. It's, it's the, the child who's up three-story building. He's up on a building, and the building's on fire. And his dad comes running over, and his dad says, Jump! Jump! I'll catch you! I'll save you! Jump! And the kid says, I can't. I can't see you. I can't see you. And his dad says, That's okay. I can. God can see us. I may not be able to see it, but I'm going to look with spiritual eyes, right? i got to look with spiritual eyes. Folks, I don't know about you, but if I don't look with spiritual eyes, if I don't understand that God is who He says He is, and he's going to take care of me. And he's going to provide for me. And that's the only way I can do it. It really is. I have to be able to see with spiritual eyes. It's so important. Faith-based giving. It's the same way. I know you don't have the money. If you had the money, we wouldn't have to finance our solar. Right? right? So I know you don't have the money. No big surprise. You didn't catch God off guard either. Or maybe we did a little bit because we didn't we do have the money. Anyway, that's another message for today. <laughs> but I know it's okay. I, I'm not asking you to give more of what you don't have. I'm asking you to give what God hasn't given you yet. Right? It's a really strange concept. I know that. But I'm asking you to give. I'm asking you to make a commitment to give what God has not given to you yet because he wants to give through you for the furtherance of the gospel around the world. That's an exciting thing, man. I want to get next year. I want to do this again next year. And we get next year and people just go, oh my gosh, it worked. It worked. You know what? I still made my budget. What? What? That's crazy. But I'm trying to tell your unsaved friends about that one. All right? But it works. It does work. Noah built an ark because it worked. God says there's a judgment coming. And Brother Chuck says there's a judgment coming in our time too. And it's coming. There are people out there dying and going to hell. And we're okay with sitting here because it's my money. Faith-based giving allows us to further the gospel in all the world. Come with me on a mission trip, folks. See the lost. Come with me and see what's going on out there. And come with me and see how hungry people really are for the gospel. And how people are literally waiting, literally waiting for somebody to come and tell them about Jesus Christ. Amen. The little bit that I've been on the mission field, the little bit that I've been around the world, 
I have had people tell me we were waiting. And I think that's sad. There's a big Catholic statue in the middle of the courtyard. What are you waiting? It's sad. Faith based giving. Lord, lay on my heart what you can give through me. To further the gospel. To further the gospel. And so, Noah built an ark. He stood up, he decided that he believed. Confidence and conviction <coughs> equal action. Confidence and conviction. When we are confident in God's promises, and we are convicted that God wants us to give, we are going to act. I'm not confident in my own self. I'll be honest with you, I am not. I know you look at me and say, ooh, he's pretty dead in there, he's got this nice little haircut, <laughs> fancy hairdo that I'm still working on trying to fit into. Um, but, but you can look at this and say, wow, how, how can you not be confident? Well, I'm not. I'm not confident in myself, but I am confident in God. Amen. And that's where my confidence is, is in the Lord. And so I have conviction. If I'm confident in God, then I have the conviction that I'm going to act. Mm -hmm. And so what have we got to act? And confidence is the foundation. That's the foundation of Jesus Christ. God, lay on my heart what you'd have me to give. It's faith, promise, giving. It's not look at my budget giving. It's faith, promise, giving. So, so we have these cards, and I talked to you a little bit about these cards. And on this card, it says, my faith, promise, offering. We're going to pass these out in a minute. Okay? You'll notice there's no place for a name on here. I don't want your name on here. Do we, don't put your name on here. Please, please, please. Okay? So we don't want your name on here because it's between you and the Lord. It's not between you and our church. It really isn't. It's between you and God. And, and this is not a pledge. Remember, you're not pledging to, to give so much money. That's not what this is about. It's, it, it, a pledge is between people. It's not a contract because contracts are written up because of distrust. Trust me. God is worthy of your trust. He really, really is. He will provide. And I don't know how he's going to provide. And I think Chuck did such a great job. He's going to increase your finances or he's going to, to, which is one way that we don't see as much or we don't talk about it or we don't realize that he's going to decrease things that fall apart, right? They're going to last longer or your tires run longer or whatever it is. And if you keep track of that stuff, you'll realize that. Or he's going to say, you know what? Why don't you just give for a while? It'll be okay. I'm still going to take care of you. And so everybody's going to give a card. And, and you can fill this out or you cannot. It's between you and the Lord. Okay? And on here, it has a fill in the mouth for weekly, yearly, monthly, annual, or one time. I don't know what God's laid on your heart. I know for some people, because they've talked to me about it, they say, God laid on my heart to give this amount right now. And it's interesting when I hear that, and I go back and I ask the church how they're doing, they go, you know what? We had this expense come up. We didn't need it. And, so, and somebody gave it up to, to cover that. It's like, ah, oh, really? That's exciting. And, and so, and it has an age group, and you can circle that or not. I don't really care. The only reason that really the age group is on here is because if, if, we, if we get one of these that says $1,000 and it's an under 12-year-old, I'm kind of tending not to believe that's going to happen. Okay, maybe my faith is weak, but okay. Um, and so why do, why do we need the card? You ask, well, why do we need the card? Because the church now gets to step out on faith too, yeah. right? So we get these up and we total them up, and, and and we get so much that we total up that we're going to get that, that the church says they committed to give. Now we can look at that and we can start moving on faith too through our faith-based giving. You, you understand what we do with that, right? Our faith promise giving is above and beyond our missionary giving. It's stuff that we use to give to uh, um, you know what. Brother Chuck talked about Jill. I know Jill. And that, that was hard to hear that about Jill. And I know he, her daddy has been in a, a serious accident too. It was hard to hear about that. And, and I know Pastor Shadrach went through some really tough times this last two years. And our church has been able to give to those, to those needs through our faith promise. That's what it's for. That's what we can do with it. But you know what? Now let's do more with it. Let's do more with it. So we get this in, and, and, and we have a commitment from our church to give whatever it is. It don't matter. Our church can budget a little bit and step out of faith and say, you know what? This is coming in. We're stepping out of faith to give even more. That's exciting to me. Because it starts with the membership, and the church as a whole, you get to give twice. You understand that? 
I hope so. I hope you understand. I tried to explain as best I could. I, I want you to know that, that God laid on my heart what you would have me to give, and it's not between you and the church. It's not between you and somebody else. It's between you and the Lord. And the reason we do this is, yes, to, to, to bring more money. And we're not asking, you know what? You ever realize God doesn't need your money? You understand that, right? God doesn't need any of our money. But he asks us to give because we need to be a part of, of this ministry. We can be a part of this ministry. We can, you guys are a part of a ministry all over the world. Come with me. Let me show you. Let me walk you, walk you and show you what you're doing with, with our funds and with our money. And the lives you're, you're touching. Every time you guys send me. Yeah, I get to be there. I get to lead the people of the Lord. I get to work with this man. We go out to villages and... And we get to lead people to the Lord, but you guys have a part of it. I think about that all the time. I really do. It's exciting. It's exciting, guys. It really is. Lord, lay on my heart what you'd have me to give. I don't know how any better way to check. I don't know how any better way to tell you about it. It's a God thing. It, it really is. It's a God thing. And we've read verses where this actually happened in, in, in New Testament times. This we are not the fourth, you know what? We're not the first church to do this. I did a promise conference in the Philippines years ago, and, and Brother Adrian Quazon and the church there said every year they do it. Every year they do it. And they send out missionaries and people like crazy out there. And they really do. And I know some churches in Africa that are that are that are doing this right now too. It's powerful. It really is. If all the churches in, in our association would get hold of this, they'd do amazing things. It would. So you know what? I think we have a verse of invitation before we pass out the cards. So I'm going to ask John to come. We have a verse of invitation. And if you're thinking about it, and you're saying it, and, and it's funny, my wife and I talked about it, and I asked her, she said, so we, we prayed about it. You know what? But I think it's important that God talks to us as individuals. And, and I had Talked to Pam, and I said, what, is, what, what do you think? Because I knew what God was kind of laying on my heart, and she gave me a number, and I go, oh my goodness. That's the exact same number I've been thinking about. You know? And you get a little, the little goosebumps come up, you know? And you think, I shouldn't feel that way because I've been asking God to do this, and when he does it, I still get a little hope. You know? That's kind of exciting. So as we stand... If there's something you want to take care of, but maybe you're not tithing, I would. This is above your tithes and offerings. Commit to tithing first.